Okay, this is my uh, very first uh, attempt at uh, playing with HHO. Uh, my very first uh, plate configuration. I took the standard uh, Lowe's uh, stainless steel plates with, uh, I'm using nine plates, complete, uh, nine plates. Uh, I'm using four nylon bolts holding them together, and I'm using uh, the thinnest nylon washers I could buy out from Lowe's to separate the plates. Basically a positive on one end, a negative on the other, and seven neutrals in the middle. Uh, if you notice, I've already ran it. I've already ran it uh, basically four times. This last time I ran it for, uh, for uh, about 45 minutes and built up all this sludge on the top. I've got some initial observations. Uh, the solution I'm using is a, uh, uh, the first solution I used was a, a plain tap water straight out of the, straight out of the sink and just kept adding uh, salt, kept adding salt, Morton salt to it until I got my, uh, until I started getting about four amps on the, uh, sh four amps showing on the uh, battery charger. Um, it started creating this brown sludge, so I said, well, let me, maybe that's just cleaning itself off. So I would dump, uh, got rid of that, changed out the solution. And this time, the solution is uh, filtered water, which is, when I say filtered, it's, uh, it's still tap water, but it's being, it's, it's filtered for, for particulates, and it, it's, it's running through two stages of carbon, carbon filtering, so that should have got most of the chlorine out of it, I would have thought. But the second solution, no matter how long I run it, it keeps generating this sludge on the top. And I believe I am in agreement with uh, with Smacks, uh, Smacks Boosters, uh, Electrobike, uh, Electrobike, I believe, here on this on the YouTube, that having you need a distilled water, and you need uh, you need some sodium hydroxide. I believe this is it. I'm going to try this on the next set of solution. I couldn't find the stuff that Smacks recommended. Uh, I saw the brand, but I didn't see the, the actual product he was trying to get. Anyways, uh, some initial observations is that when this runs, the hydrogen, pro uh, hydrogen production appears to want to prefer sharp edges. I mean, I'm sure you can, you can force it against, you can force it to be created against the flat surfaces but it has a very strong tendency of wanting to be wanting to come off the sharp edges, and and I'm somewhat in disagreement with Zero Point, as his design configurations want to seal us up and just leave small vents at the top and the bottom, because he's he's making the point, which is a valid point, is that the electricity wants to go the path of le the least resistance, which would be around the plates from from the outside to outside. I don't necessarily I, I don't necessarily agree with his logic. I mean, yeah, I mean, it is valid, but I think what you really need is you want to take advantage. You want to take advantage of the fact that it wants to do multiple paths. And I've got an idea about what I want to do for the next pl plate configuration, and it is to increase the number of sharp edges. Uh, We'll see how that goes. But anyway, some of the observations I see, uh, hydrogen wants to come off sharp edges. The sludge is highly conductive. So once your plates touch that sludge, you basically shorted out your plates and your, and your production will go away. And so you want to avoid creating the sludge at all, if at all possible. Now, the other observation I've noticed is that I don't, I believe the oxygen is not actually being released from the water. It is, uh, uh, it is combining with either the, with with both the the uh, impurities of the water that you're using, plus uh, plus any of the materials that are leaching out of the stainless steel are being uh, uh, is combining with the materials in the stainless steel, and it's creating a sludge. And if you look at it close, it's uh, it's of at least two different colors. So that means it's 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 merging with two different materials. There's a red, uh, dark reddish brown color and some black and depending upon where you measure it with your own meter you're going to find uh, 
the 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 resistance of this material can be as low as uh, lowest I've read it so far, just by just spot checking it is about 41 ohms. You you want to avoid creating this sludge if at all possible. Uh, this this sludge, whatever if you're if you're creating solids in your in your AGHO uh, cell, yeah, that's a bad thing. Because eventually it'll create enough sludge or enough particulates in here that'll start shorting out your plate, and then your production will go down. But let me fire this up so you can see what I'm talking about. Now, you know, when it starts firing up, what'll happen is some of this material will get slushed off the bottom of this thing and circle down. But over on this, on the oxygen side, uh, which is going to be the positive plate, uh, you'll see that it is producing this black crap or this sludge and it's wanting to come up the back side of the device. Now the other thing that's bad with this is that as this sludge builds up less and less of the hydrogen is able to make it out of the sludge or make it past the sludge and get out. What happens to the hydrogen that can't get out it swirls around and it gets absorbed back into the into the water. Now it's, it's still hydrogen in other words where you've got hydrogen in here but it's not released it didn't come out of the solution so that you could burn it. All right, let me go plug it in and show you what this looks like. Stand by. Uh, sorry about that. All right, plugging it in. And you can see we're starting to hydrogen. And you notice there's almost, almost no oxygen being released. But you are getting this brown sludge. Let's see if I can turn this around a little bit better without stirring up that brown sludge too much. And brown sludge is coming down. Well, some of that, most of that is coming being swirled off the top. But the oxygen, I mean, obviously you're not going to have near as much oxygen production as hydrogen. But I believe a significant portion of the oxygen that's getting released is actually recombining with the materials in the tank, in the solution, and collecting at the top. It's that this, this stuff at the top works like a daggum barrier. I mean, our, our hydrogen's got to work real hard to get through it. So what little's coming out? What little's coming out is uh, a very low, it's, it's limiting the amount of production that's being allowed to come, come in here. Yeah. And uh, whatever, when it pops, the reason why it's not popping very loud is because it's pure hydrogen rather than hydrogen and oxygen rather than hydroxy so whatever it pops it has to get it has to get the oxygen out of the, the air around it all right so what I got in mind to do and you can see it's swirling that brown sludge off the top of it what I got in mind to do is to change my solution one more time and go with a with a distilled water and uh, distilled water in uh, sodium hydroxide that's basically the, what I had available yeah, I saw some uh, liquid solutions in there. I may, I may go with a liquid, um, but yeah, I'm just like I said. This is the first time I've done this, and I've already seen things that I'd like to improve. Uh, I want to change. I got an idea about what I want to do with the plate configuration. Change that. Take, you know, take advantage of the fact that we want to do multiple paths, and it like, and it prefers to do sharp edges. So I got a, a few ideas for that. Anyways. Uh, that's it for this this particular test. If I get anything worth worthwhile, well, even if I don't have anything worthwhile, uh, it'll be a little bit before I create my next video. All right, thank you.